Sometimes I wish I could relive the experience of what it was like to listen to one of my favorite songs again for the first time. And I think if I could choose one song that would have this power over me, it would be this one. Where were you when I was still kind? It's Master and Hound by Gregory Allen Isakoff, and it is a masterpiece. Just a water but it gets there by breaking the right rules of modern songwriting. For instance, take the first instrument we hear. It isn't an instrument at all. It's wind. Then a nylon stringed classical guitar, 16th notes on a quick 135 beats per minute. Yet the song feels slow. I think the simplicity of certain parts of Isakoff's writing, Master and Hound uses only four chords and 84 words, is the grounding we need as he continues to upend our expectations. Instrumentally, it's just as grounded, only ever gaining a piano and a cello as the song gains momentum. But it isn't until we look at the structure of the song that we begin to understand just how different this song really is. Almost every popular song you've ever listened to is primarily a relationship between verse and chorus. But Isakoff ignores all this. No verse, no chorus. He writes musical ideas, which music theory typically divides into lettered sections. Master and Hound is A-A-B-B. This style of writing, the unique arrangement of musical ideas, is not new. In fact, some of the greatest songs ever written were composed this way. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far over the rainbows. And I think to myself, What a wonderful world. So what does this do? Well, music on a neurological level is all about patterns, and humans in particular are pattern machines. But often, the joy in listening to music comes from the moments those patterns become less recognizable. Psychologists describe this paradox with what's called the anticipatory phase and the experiential phase. Both involve the neurotransmitter dopamine, but light up different parts of the brain. The artist needs to create a balance between pleasurable patterns and boring predictability, mediating the strange connection between logic and emotion. Isakov's melodies and instruments are simple and hypnotic, but he never gives us the chorus that totally satisfies us. The result is a song that also functions as an invitation to be fully present. This is how profound creations happen, when we can tolerate the place our imagination takes us, especially when it doesn't make sense to us when we get there. I mean, I think that, that the way that I, I write songs is, um, is sort of a mystery to me. I, I think uh, a lot of times I don't really know what they're about when, I, when they're happening, you know? Everything about Isakoff suggests a personal surrender to this mystery. From the way he writes his songs to the way he lights his performances, it's pretty rare to ever see his face. Or in the way that Master and a Hound was written, after weeks of fascination with a snow globe he was given as a gift. Snow. Painter Milford Zorn said all art is abstract because art is an abstraction of the truth. I think I like this song so much because it hints at the truth that life looks a lot like a continuous search for something we'll probably never find. But I'm grateful for music like Gregory Allen Isakoff's that keep us company along the way. Um. Thank you so much for watching that video. Uh, it was a blast for me to put together. Um, this channel started as a bit of an experiment during quarantine because I had a ton of time. And 
I really enjoyed the process of making this and I would love to expand it out further. So if you enjoyed that video, please consider subscribing. Uh, that's gonna be the easiest way for me to get feedback. So until next time, thank you so much.